So this one is going to be interesting, less of a straightforward tutorial and more of an adventure. I thought this project would be simple, and it could have been, but I went into a serious perfectionism mode and ended up trying multiple patterning and construction methods. So I could have cut all that out and made a streamlined tutorial, but I decided to keep everything because there were valuable lessons that I learned from each misstep. The project was to recreate this Pinterest dress, which has been on my list for forever. I adore the way the stripes are angled. There are very clean lines and it's a simple pattern, but it has a lot of visual interest purely because of the pattern matching. I decided to go for it because I found the perfect fabric on Mood, which I will link below, though I'm sure it won't be available forever. At least you can go back and reference the weight, scale, and fiber content. The patterning was simple enough. I took my basic bodice block and traced over the front piece, because it's a wrapped top and I need to see both halves. I widened the neckline on the front and back, though I didn't lower it much in the back. I trimmed a bit from the bottom edge to make room for the waistband. I decided how far I wanted the front to wrap, then used a ruler to draw a line between that mark and the edge of the neckline. I used a French curve to smooth out that joint. Then I measured in from the neckline and the arm's eye edges by about two and a half inches, and these pieces will become my facing patterns. For the skirt, looking at the source, you can see that it is gathered, but the stripes cut away a bit up the sides of the skirt. So I took this to mean that the skirt was flared, and I tried out a couple of my basic skirt patterns, made in this video, to see which one fit the fabric best and which one just seemed to have the right shape. I also pulled out my standard pocket pattern, and we're good to go. Now, because of the funky way I cut out my skirt patterns, the upper edge was fine to cut along, but I had to remember to add a half inch of seam allowance along the side seam as I cut. I also decided to make the dress a few inches shorter than my pattern was sized for, so I just marked the bottom edge with pins and then measured up and cut along my ruler edge. So here's the skirt panel all cut out. The front and back are currently the same, though I'll have to cut the front panel into two to make way for the closure. And here's where I ran into my first bit of trouble. If I drew a line angled out to correctly split the flare of the skirt, then the stripes would be cut on an angle and the original dress clearly has straight stripes. But if I just cut along the stripes, that would cause the button placket to hang a bit… crooked. I realized at this point that I was probably incorrect in my study of the original dress. It was probably made with straight skirt panels, and the angle of the stripes on the sides of this image just come from the way the skirt was laid out. However, I didn't have nearly enough fabric left to recut both skirt panels, so I just decided to choose one of two bad options, and I cut along the stripe. The bodice was more straightforward. The back needed to be cut on a fold, and the fronts needed to be angled so that the grain line and the stripes ran vertically along the straight edge of the neckline. I also cut out my pockets, facings, and the waistband, which was made long enough to match the entire finished edge of the bodice, including the underlay. Then I used the angled edge left over from the skirt seam and cut a 3 inch wide strip, which will be the button placket. It's maybe not the exact same angle as the original used, but close enough, and it's much less fabric waste to use this pre-cut edge. Then to cut out the lining, I need to trim down the neckline of my pattern pieces a bit. This is a different type of finishing that I've been wanting to try for a while, and uh, you'll see how it went. I used a lightweight cotton lawn for my lining. Okay, everything cut out and we're ready to start. As usual, start with the darts. I don't need to go into much explanation for those, right? You've seen other videos, probably. Let's focus our screen time on the weird stuff. I have still been trimming the inside of my darts. I just like the way it looks. They lay so much smoother when I iron them open. And look at that beautiful chevron pattern on the back darts. Fine. Next, I put the bodice pieces right sides together and sewed up the shoulder seams. So far, so good. Now is when it gets weird. To get to this same place with the lining will take a lot more work. First, I need to put the darts in my linings, just the same, and then I need to sew the shoulder seams. But then I have the facings to do. Let's start with the neckline. I sewed the fronts to the back at the shoulder seams and ironed them open. Then, to make attaching these two opposite curves easier, I ran a basting stitch along the seam allowance of the bodice lining. I began pinning the facings to the neckline, and wherever the curve got tight, I simply cut clips in to almost meet that basting stitch. Then I decided I didn't like it. It was much too flimsy and unstructured, so I took the facing pieces apart and cut out some fusible cotton interfacing. 
I repeated all of those steps with the now interfaced neck pieces and then stitched around the neckline, following that basting stitch. I folded the bodice out flat and edge stitched around that seam. See that? Simple enough. <laughs> now I have to do the exact same thing with the arm's eye facings. When I finished, the seam allowances were overlapping at the narrow part of the shoulder, so I trimmed both down. And here's what it looked like. I've been wanting to try this finishing method for a while because it just looks so clean, but I don't think I'll ever do it again. It just took so long. I'm sure there are at least three other ways I could have done it that would have looked just as nice and taken half the time. Also, it doesn't even look that nice. There's a lot of subtle warping and stretching along the seams, maybe just due to the different fabric weights. It's not horrible, but it's not nice enough to justify the time that this construction method took. And then, when I went to put the bodice outer and lining together, for some reason they did not line up at all. Okay, well, I messed something up and I'm really not sure what it was. So these seams line up, the shoulder seams, but then this is like a full inch and a half too long and I did have a lot of problems getting this edge to fit. I had to stretch out this white layer. I don't know what I did. Um, you know what? At this point, I am not thrilled with this lining layer. I say screw it. I'm just going to recut it out as a striped lining layer and just stitch it together. Yeah, I'm just going to start over on the lining. Okay, well, this was a fun experiment. I say fun, but actually I mean a waste of time. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm not 100% sure what I did, but there's only one thing I can think of, and that is maybe I cut the facing pattern pieces before I trimmed the waistband length off the bodice. That's the only thing I can think of. It's way too drastic of a difference to be something just got cut slightly wrong. I didn't have enough striped fabric left over to cut a whole lining from it, so I just cut out more cotton lawn, and if the blank white lining peeps out from the edges, so be it. I prepared this lining in the exact same way that I made my bodice outer, and then I put them together. I stitched along the neckline and the arm size, then I trimmed and clipped the seams and turned the bodice right side out. I opened up the side seams and lined up the fronts and backs, with the outers together and the linings together as one seam. I stitched it, ironed it open, then folded those seams back down, and everything is now all nice and neatly contained. However, it didn't want to lay very smoothly, and I was too late to add an understitching seam, so I decided to top stitch it with a nice small running stitch. I sewed all along the front edges and the neckline and around the arm size. Here's what it looked like at this point. It was nice and neat, but just really floppy. The striped cotton was very lightweight, and the lawn was even lighter. Together, they didn't amount to almost any structure. But it was late, so I decided to base together the bottom edges and call it for the night. In the morning, I surveyed my previous day's work, and I kind of hated everything. I hated how the skirt was going to hang crooked. I hated how thin and floppy the bodice was. I tried it on and it was tighter than I wanted, meaning that it was turning out lower cut than I'd planned, and it gaped really bad around the cleavage. In all, for something that I had such high hopes for, it was turning out like a B- at best. So I decided to order another yard and a half of fabric. I usually wouldn't do that, but I just knew that I wasn't going to be happy with the result at the rate that I was going. So this way I'll have enough to cut the skirt as straight panels, and then I can tweak the pattern and recut the bodice from the old skirt panels. So I guess I'll see you next week or whenever the fabric gets in. But in the meantime, we haven't checked up on the chickens for a while. Okay, so the babies just went outside today. They're getting very big and very flappy. So these are all of my olive eggers that I got from a special, like, fancy hatchery. And I put them on order in, in January because these are kind of like the chickens that I've been wanting for years now. And so it was expensive, but hopefully I won't have to ever do it again because in the future I can probably just keep rebreeding them. Um, maybe just get a new rooster every year so that the gene pool keeps circulating. But yes, they're very, very beautiful and so, so cute. <laughs> Aww. Guys, don't hurt yourselves. <laughs> and then
we built a chicken run. It's not in its final form right now. It's definitely not like secure enough long term, but like it's good enough for now. And then later on we can move it and it'll be fine. And then these were my impulse buy babies. They're getting a little bit braver. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. You're fine. Quit it. Okay, so these were my impulse buy babies because they had turkeys, so I had to buy them. <laughs> but then, of course, you can only buy a minimum of four birds, so I had to buy uh, five more. <laughs> so, yes, they're getting very big, especially the turkeys. They're getting big really fast. And then you see that little hole. That is for their integration, and they're doing really, really well so far. Okay, you can go run around if you just go away, okay? Just leave us alone for like five minutes. <laughs> and then there was a huge problem with half of my eggs were cracking every single day. So I stapled down little foam mats at the base and none of them have cracked since. Look at these beautiful, beautiful eggs. Look at this one with speckles. We've got the garden put in mostly. I mean, I haven't planted most of it, but it's at least ready to go. Um, hopefully I can get that done next week. And yeah, that's basically everything that's going on right now. So I guess back to the sewing project. Okay, so here's how I tweaked the bodice pattern. I added a bit to the center back seam. I think that's where I got off and how it ended up being too tight. I also tried contouring the front edge of the bodice. I tried it on and pinched in the gaping edges. I transferred that dart to the pattern and cut a wedge out of the apex. I shifted the other two darts, widening them to equally absorb that wedge. Then, of course, the neckline is now bent in, so I added more paper and straightened out that line. I've never tried contouring like this, but it should work, in theory. So when my new fabric arrived, I recut the bodice following my altered patterns. I cut a lawn lining identical to the outer, and I also cut striped facing pieces. I'm going to try a completely different construction method, with the goal of giving the bodice that structure that the first version was completely lacking. Start with the darts on both sides of the outer and lining, 12 darts in total. Then I'm going to line all of my bodice pieces up at once. I'm essentially flat lining the bodice, I'm just not basting them together first. So the back outer and lining are wrong sides together, and the front outer and lining are wrong sides together, and the bodice pieces are then placed right sides together. All four edges are lined up and pinned. Then the side seams are stitched. Now for the shoulder seams, I was really annoyed that on my first version I couldn't quite get the stripes to line up. They were just so close, but not quite on the target. So this time I ironed down the seam allowance just so that I could use the fold line as a marker. Then I hand stitched the shoulders together, lining up each eighth of an inch stripe. I know, I know, it's a bit anal at this point, but I figured I might as well do it right since I'm bothering to do it all over anyways. Then I machine stitched over my basting and I did have to adjust that seam to get it perfect, but look at it, so satisfying. Now I'm going to take these shoulder seams and side seams and I'm going to fold them under and fell them. Yes, bagging the lining like I did with the first bodice is easier, faster, and looks clean from the inside. But felled seams like these, with the fabric layered and stitched through together, these seams will be twice or three times as strong and give the whole bodice more structure and rigidity. So yes, I felled through just the lawn lining so that my stitches weren't visible from the outside. It is nice sometimes to do a project like this, especially when you've had a week to consider everything you didn't like before and all of the things you wished you'd done, then to actually have the chance to do it. I mean, don't wheel spin in perfectionism all the time, especially not when you're using more expensive fabrics, but it is nice to do this every once in a while. Just look at it, so much better. Okay, on to the facings. Again, I could have finished the neckline and arm size in a simpler, quicker method, but the reason I decided to use this one is for the body it would build into these edges. So first I ironed on some fusible cotton interfacing. You'll notice the interfacing is cut a half inch short on the lower edge. Then I stitched the shoulder seams of the neckline facing and the underarm seam of the arm's eye facings. I pressed all of these seams open and then clipped around the outside edges, clipping just shy of the interfacing. 
Then I pressed the outside edges in, using the interfacing as a guide to get a nice, smooth, crisp fold. Starting with the neckline, on my bodice I pinned the lining and outer together, just to keep them neat while I added the facing. I lined up the inside edges of the facing with a bodice, pinning them all smoothly together. I stitched around the front edges and the neckline, and then I trimmed the seam down by about half and clipped it. I ironed it, folding the edges towards the facing, which was not intuitive for the fabric since that was stacking all of the thick layers on top of each other, but then I edge stitched around the facing, tacking all of those seams underneath. Now I have a crisp, clean edge to fold the facing along. I ironed it to the inside of the bodice, and then I smoothed it out flat and began to pin the outside edges of the facing down. I adjusted my pins so that they were just catching the lawn lining layer. It'll just make it easier. Then I used tiny stitches to fell down the edge of the facing, and the neckline is finished. Now I just have to repeat that process with the arm size. When the arm size were done, I ran a basting stitch along the bottom edge of the bodice and it is finished. Quick note, look at how much body it now has. Look at how much dimension it has, just laying down on its own. Compare that to the floppy bagged lining of the first bodice. I'm not saying that one is better than the other in all occasions, but I am saying consider how you want a project to turn out and what your fabric is like when you're deciding how to construct garments. If I'd done that, I could have saved myself about one whole work day. Now, to prepare the skirt, I cut it into two panels, and I did decide to trim a bit of width from the panels. The fabric was 60 inches wide, two panels of which was just going to be too much bulk in a straight, gathered, shorter skirt like this. To split the front panels, I folded it into fourths and cut off one quarter. This was actually wrong. I'm not sure why I thought that was the right proportion. If you look at the dress, it's obviously closer to thirds, and I could have always just measured my pattern and used a proportion equation to figure it out exactly. It didn't make a big difference though. I didn't even notice the unevenness until I was gathering the skirt, and now that it's done you can't tell at all. Okay, it's time to set the pockets, and since we're already going all out with perfectionism, I decided to set the pockets with French seams. I did French seam pocket finishings on skirts way back, but I don't think I've done it since. Now feels like a good time. So place the pockets at the side seams of the skirt panels. I usually set mine about three and a half inches from the top edge of the skirt. Then I'm going to sew them with just barely under a quarter inch seam. Fold and iron the pocket over, and then clip the fold just to the seam. Then stitch that same seam again at just over a quarter of an inch. Fold it back out and iron it, and then edge stitch the seam allowance down towards the pocket. This will make the fold for the pocket nice and crisp. Now you can line up the skirt front and back panels wrong sides together. I pinned down the side seam and around the pocket, and then stitched all around the seam with right under a quarter of an inch allowance. Then I realized that I was going to have an issue with the bulk of the French seam getting in the way, so I restitched just the skirt side seams at a half inch. I trimmed these seams down, especially the side seam, and then I clipped all the corners. I turned the skirt wrong side out, flattened out the seam, pinned it, and added placement for how far up the base of the pocket I needed to sew. One last thing to add is a short tape to the top corner of the pocket. I have finally figured out to cut these tapes at half an inch longer than the distance from the top edge of the pocket to the top edge of the skirt. Otherwise, when the skirt becomes three-dimensional, it's hard to guess how far down the pocket is supposed to hang. Stitch the seam at just over a quarter inch. Reinforce the pocket tape, sew around the curve, don't forget to turn and stitch up the base of the pocket, then do a 180 and stitch all the rest of the way back down the side seam. Now you can iron it smooth and then look at this beautifully set French seamed pocket. No serger, no pinking, no messiness. This particular construction does take some time, but I feel like the end result is worth it. It's just so fine. Next, I'm going to add the strip that will become the button placket. I lined it up so that the stripes would be angling down the dress. Also, notice that it's too short. I cut it about one and three quarter inches shorter than the skirt because I'm planning on doing a one and three quarter inch deep hem. 
you'll see. Just pin it lined up with the top edge of the skirt and then sew it down at a half inch. Fold it out and iron it, and then fold the edge under by a half inch and iron it again. Leave that alone for now and shift to the hem. I ironed the edge up by a half inch and I carried that all the way around the circumference of the skirt. Then I folded the hem up again by 1.75 inches, and you can see how that also raises the raw edge of the button placket. I kept folding up and pinning all the way around the hem. Then I folded over the button placket, meeting up with the folded edge of that seam, and pinned it. Now I decided to fell these all by hand, the whole hem and the two placket strips. This was some very satisfying hand stitching. The stripes were small and easy to follow, and I centered each stitch over a white stripe so it's completely invisible from the front. Okay, so I just finished the last strip of this, and I might take it out and redo it, because for some reason it twisted pretty bad. I'm not sure if I was holding it wrong and the tension was... I don't know what was going on, or maybe it was because I started at the bottom instead of the top. But, like, it only got moved down by about a quarter of an inch, but it still made a crazy amount of difference, and I don't think I could iron it flat. I think that it would end up with folds. So, since this is kind of a perfectionist project, I think I'm going to redo it. Okay, that is much, much better. So I don't know what the physics behind it was, but for some reason, starting from the top was fine. Starting from the bottom got it horribly twisted. Okay, time to put it all together. But first, the waistband. I did need to add a seam in the back of the waistband. I don't know, it was just the best way to cut the fabric. Then I set a strip of cotton interfacing over the waistband and ironed that down. Then I put the waistband outer and lining right sides together and stitched the two short ends. It will just be easier this way, to sandwich the bodice and skirt edges in rather than trying to sew around them later. So yes, go ahead and sandwich the bodice in between the layers of the waistband. Then sew along that seam. Notice that I didn't sew all the way to the edge. I started right at the seam and then I ended right at the opposite seam. Then I folded those short seams back and turned the waistband down, ironing both sides smooth. I don't feel like I need to understitch or anything here. The weight of the skirt will pull on that waistband, keeping it straight. To attach the skirt, first we need a gathering stitch. Since we're going all out on this project, might as well do the second row. Why not? Then I lined up the side seams, center back, and front plackets with the waistband. And here's where I realized that the bulk of the skirt was uneven between these segments. Oh well. I gathered it up and pinned it smooth between each segment, and then I measured the distance from the side seam to the pocket tape, marked this measurement on the seam, and tacked up the other end of the tape. This does look super funky on the underlap side of the bodice, but there's nothing really to do about it, and it's not like there's anything actually wrong with it, it's just more constructed than what we're used to seeing. I stitched this seam, and then I turned the bodice over and restitched it so that I could more perfectly follow one of the stripes. I trimmed the seam down, and then took it to the ironing board and folded the waistband lining down to meet the seam and cover all the bleh. I filled the waistband down by hand. Look at it, on the underlapped edge? Isn't that weird? But it works. <laughs> okay, well, I am down two buttons and buttonholes, and I got one button sewn on. Ooh, that looks really yellow on camera. It's not that bad in real life. Hmm. Well, either way. <laughs> I could finish it tonight, but I've got a headache, so I'm just going to finish it tomorrow. Okay, so I slept on it and I really don't like these yellowed buttons, which is kind of frustrating because I have this whole jar of buttons, but they're pretty much all plastic and they're all old, so they're all yellow. So I'm going to wait for joints to open and then just go get some new buttons. Okay, fine. Yeah, that's a lot better. <laughs> and yeah, I forgot to film the buttons and buttonholes, but you know what that looks like. I also added a little snap to prevent the neckline from gaping. And with that, the dress is complete. I'm pretty happy with how this project turned out. It was definitely worth it to go back and correct my mistakes. Sometimes a project looks deceptively simple and you might be tempted to just jump into it without thoroughly planning your construction, and that can bite you. Other things just become intuitive with experience. Like I should have known that such lightweight fabrics would need more structure to recreate this particular garment, but I've been working with heavy wools all winter now and the thought of adding additional structure just never crossed my mind. Someday I'll learn. The construction is fantastic, but the fit is a little disappointing. The bodice is just sort of 
baggy. It might be partly because it's a wrapped top and those just have a slightly different tension and the patterns aren't going to lay as nicely as a straightforward basic bodice. It might be partly the funky grain lines. However, I think the big problem goes back to my bodice block. The darts still aren't quite right, but it wasn't very noticeable until I switched to a lighter weight fabric. I think the dart legs are too long. I usually measure out an inch from the apex, so I'm going to try an inch and a quarter next time, and if it's still not right, I'll bump it to an inch and a half. Also, I think the bust is slightly too large overall. If you remember, I did a full bust adjustment when I was making this block, and I'd never done that before, so I was just eyeballing it. I think I might have slightly overcompensated. So I'm going to go back and take about a half inch out and see if it helps the bust lay smoother next time. Here's a cost breakdown of this project. I need to start doing these again. I think they're helpful to people to get a realistic idea of how much a quality sewing project costs. It's hard to quantify the things that are already in my stash or that I bought in bulk when they were on sale and then just keep on hand. I think I'll not count those as costs specific to this project, but I'll list them because you'll have to factor them in if you don't already have a decent sewing stash. And a thought about the pattern. Even though I overcomplicated the construction process, this was actually a pretty simple pattern that could be made with a lot of different variations. This dress is basically the same, but with a higher neckline. On this dress, the skirt wraps all the way around the underlay, so the buttons have been moved up, allowing for it to split, though not too much. This knit dress wraps and has a bow tie instead of buttons, and fitted sleeves have been added. This dress has a looser fit, with fluttery sleeves and a flounce along the skirt front and hem. And this dress has added a flounce to the neckline as well. Okay, well, this was fun. I'll be working on new videos soon, probably a capsule wardrobe design video next. Lots of exciting projects coming up, both of the practical sort and the extremely impractical. If you don't feel confident enough to make the pattern for this dress, or if you don't have a bodice block, or you don't have time to make one, the size graded PDF version will be going up on my Patreon soon. See ya.